why civilizations collapse and what we can do about it. The collapse of various civilizations such as the Roman Empire, the Greek Empire, the Mycenaeans, the Minoans, Mayans, Ancient Egypt, the Sumerians, Akkadians, Indus Valley, the Assyrians, Hittites and many others will be explained. The Usual Reasons for Collapse As we can see from history there are very many examples of great civilizations that have collapsed. The main reasons for the collapse of major civilizations are primarily depopulation or conquest. We will look at a case-by-case -case basis for the collapse of the major historical civilizations, and examine the reasons for their collapse. Check the description for links where all of this information was gathered from. Depopulation Civilizations die from suicide, not by murder. Arnold J. Toynbee If we look into the past archaeological record we can see that at the end of every civilization there is a period of time when the number of members of that society go into steep decline. Usually all or most of the cities of the civilization are abandoned or destroyed, most of which are never occupied again. We can observe this because in ancient cities there is usually a destruction layer that is seen when they are abandoned. Sometimes the cities are occupied again, but it is usually by a different culture and usually the cities are used for farming, which can be seen by garden layers in the archaeological record of major cities such as Rome etc. Conquest Sometimes civilizations are destroyed by conquest, however this happens fairly rarely. The most famous example is the fall of the Aztec and Inca empires after being conquered by the Spanish. However even though they were conquered by the Spanish and their indigenous allies, the major cause of collapse was the smallpox epidemic that wiped out large numbers of their population. Collapse by conquest usually happens when a civilization has already been depopulated either by disease, or mainly by sub-replacement fertility. The Roman Empire this is usually the most studied ancient civilization that has collapsed. We will observe some clues as to why the Roman Empire collapsed. One of the causes is that the capital city ancient Rome, which had a population of about 1.5 million during the reign of Trajan in the early 2nd century AD, declined to only 15,000 inhabitants by the 9th century. The population declined by more than 95% in the space of a few centuries. Similar population declines were seen throughout the entire Roman and Hellenic world. However even though the population decline was documented, the question is why did the population decline? Reasons for population decline There are many reasons for a population to decline, such as plagues, famines, natural disasters, war etc etc. However most civilizations endure plagues, famines natural disasters and wars and survive afterwards. Usually a population eventually rebounds after a great crisis. However there is another reason for a population to decline severely which is called sub-replacement fertility. Sub-replacement fertility in the Hellenistic world. The Greek historian Polybius largely blamed the decline of the Hellenistic world on low fertility rates, writing his work The Histories That. In our time all Greece was visited by a dearth of children and generally a decay of population, owing to which the cities were denuded of inhabitants, and a failure of productiveness resulted, though there were no long continued wars or serious pestilences among us. For this evil grew upon us rapidly, and without attracting attention, by our men becoming perverted to a passion for show and money and the pleasures of an idle life, and accordingly either not marrying at all, or, if they did marry, refusing to rear the children that were born, or at most one or two out of a great number, for the sake of leaving them well off or bringing them up in extravagant luxury. Sub-replacement fertility in ancient Rome In a speech to Roman nobles, the Emperor Augustus commented on the low birth rates of the Roman elite. Those not in the senatorial class I have permitted to wed freed women so that if any one through passion or some inclination should be disposed to such a proceeding he might go about it lawfully. I have not limited you rigidly to this, even, but at first gave you three whole years in which to make preparations, and later too. Yet not even so, by threatening or urging or postponing or entreating, have I accomplished anything. 
you see for yourselves how much larger a mass you constitute than the married men, when you ought by this time to have furnished us with as many more children, or rather with several times your number. How otherwise shall families continue? How can the commonwealth be preserved if we neither marry nor produce children? Surely you are not expecting some to spring up from the earth to succeed to your goods and to public affairs, as myths describe. It is neither pleasing to heaven nor creditable that our race should cease and the name of Romans meet extinguishment in us, and the city be given up to foreigners, Greek or even barbarians. Urbanization and Sub-Replacement Fertility As we can see from historic texts and archaeological evidence, the population declined rapidly due to a low fertility rate among the members of the civilizations. However what caused the fertility rate to be so low? One of the main and time-tested reasons is urbanization, as people move to the city their fertility rate declines steeply after a few generations. This is true today and it is true in ancient times as well. There is nothing new about the sub-replacement fertility rates that are being seen in the world today. The Roman Empire had very high urbanization rates, that were not seen in Europe until after at least the 19th century and evidently many Romans had spent much time in cities for their fertility to decline to very low levels that were seen by Augustus. Why does urbanization reduce fertility? Urbanization reduces fertility generally over a few generations. As a country moves from the beginning of the demographic transition it moves from a mostly nomadic or rural society, to a mostly urban society. And the population densities of ancient cities were even higher than we have today, due to no mechanized transport and the limited availability of water. It can also be seen that in most countries with high urbanization rates throughout the world, such as Europe and East Asia the fertility is sub-replacement, sometimes far below the 2.1 replacement rate. There have been experiments done by John B. Calhoun on mice that showed that high population density reduces fertility, and the population of the mice colony mirrored the population of Rome. John B. Calhoun's Urbanization Experiments In the early 1960s, the National Institute of Mental Health, NIMH, acquired property in a rural area outside Poolesville, Maryland. The facility that was built on this property housed several research projects including those headed by Calhoun. It was here that his most famous experiment, the Mouse Universe, was created. In July 1968 four pairs of mice were introduced into the Utopian Universe. The Universe was a 9-foot, 2.7 meters, square metal pen with 4.5-foot high, 1.4 meters, sides. Each side had four groups of four vertical, wire mesh tunnels, the tunnels gave access to nesting boxes, food hoppers, and water dispensers. There was no shortage of food or water or nesting material. There were no predators. The only adversity was the limit on space. Initially the population grew rapidly, doubling every 55 days. The population reached 620 by day 315, after which the population growth dropped markedly doubling only every 145 days. The last surviving birth was on day 600, bringing the total population to a mere 2,200 mice, even though the experiment set up allowed for as many as 3,840 mice in terms of nesting space. This period between day 315 and day 600 saw a breakdown in social structure and in normal social behavior. After day 600, the social breakdown continued and the population declined toward extinction. During this period females ceased to reproduce. Their male counterparts withdrew completely, never engaging in courtship or fighting. They ate, drank, slept, and groomed themselves, all solitary pursuits. Sleek, healthy coats and an absence of scars characterize these males. They were dubbed the beautiful ones. Breeding never resumed and behavior patterns were permanently changed. The conclusions drawn from this experiment were that when all available space is taken and all social roles filled, competition and the stresses experienced by the individuals will result in a total breakdown in complex social behaviors, ultimately resulting in the demise of the population. Calhoun saw the fate of the population of mice as a metaphor for the potential fate of man. 
he characterized the social breakdown as a second death. His study has been cited by writers such as Bill Perkins as a warning of the dangers of the living in an increasingly crowded and impersonal world. Analysis of Results Human civilization inevitably leads to greater levels of urbanization. Past civilizations have all succumbed to sub-replacement fertility due to high urbanization rates. The textbook collapse of the major Roman and Greek civilizations, can be seen again in the Bronze Age collapse, the Mayan collapse and other civilizations. All of these civilizations shared the same fate in the end, the rapid decline of population, the abandonment of cities, the invasion by barbarians. It can all be attributed to sub-replacement fertility, which the Roman and Greek historians have told us about. The Future of Humanity As the majority of the people on the earth in the past have lived in primarily rural areas we have had sustained population growth especially with the health explosion which has happened recently. However now the majority of the world is moving to urban cities, and the urbanization rate is increasing all the time. Currently around 50% of the world lives in sub-replacement fertility countries, by the end of the century, the UN predicts that only a handful of countries will have replacement fertility. If the trend persists the human race will go extinct like the ancient Romans and Greeks and the other great civilizations before them. Once a population starts to decline from sub-replacement fertility, it is impossible to stop the decline. Without immigration. And even immigration is a temporary solution as the immigrants will also copy the habits of the host population. Eventually a population with sub-replacement fertility will disappear. Possible Solutions Since no past civilization on Earth has been able to survive sub-replacement fertility due to urbanization, we can see that the contemporary solutions available to us have very low chances of success. There is the possibility of artificial womb such as in the matrix where humans are grown, however we are far away from that technologically. There is the possibility of joining the human consciousness with machines, or creating an artificial intelligence however again we are very far away from that technologically. There is also the possibility of genetic engineering which could somehow raise fertility or make humans immune to the effects of high density living. A possible answer to the Fermi paradox. Since the majority of past urbanized civilizations on Earth have succumbed to low fertility, it is conceivable that sub replacement fertility is the so called great filter. Which means low fertility due to urbanization is the reason we do not see or hear about any other civilizations in the universe. As soon as a civilization becomes mostly urbanized, it dies within a few hundred years according to history. So just as soon as the ability to transmit radio signals appears, it is extinguished within a few centuries, the blink of an eye in cosmological terms. The Tree of Life Calhoun's Thoughts I shall largely speak of mice, but my thoughts are on man, on healing, on life and its evolution. Threatening life and evolution are the two deaths, death of the spirit and death of the body. Evolution, in terms of ancient wisdom is the acquisition of access to the tree of life. This takes us back to the white first horse of the apocalypse which with its rider set out to conquer the forces that threatened the spirit with death. Further in Revelation we note, To him who conquers I will grant to eat the tree of life, which is in the paradise of God and further on the leaves of the tree were for the healing of nations. This takes us to the fourth horse of the apocalypse I saw a pale horse, and its rider's name was Death and Hades followed him, and they were given power over a fourth of the earth, to kill with the sword and with famine and with pestilence and by wild beasts of the earth. This second death has gradually become the predominant concern of modern medicine. And yet there is nothing in the earlier history of medicine, or in the precepts embodied in the Hippocratic Oath, that precludes medicine from being equally concerned with healing the spirit, and healing nations, as with healing the body. Perhaps we might do well to reflect upon another of John's transcriptions He who conquers shall not be hurt by the second death. DNA and the Tree of Life Since Calhoun lived in an age before genetic engineering he would not have been able to do any experiments on the mice to see if tweaking their DNA would help them survive the mouse utopia. 
he tried all other options to try to increase the survival time of the mice, by rationing food, space, and other factors however nothing worked. However since we have genetic engineering technology available to use now, we should now try to use genetic engineering on mice to see if we can increase their survival time in a high-density environment.